you're now going to learn everything you need to know to import your images into Darttable. And what I would like you to do is import all the images in the Section 3 folder so you can use those images throughout the rest of this class. And of course, you can import your own images once you're done with this tutorial as well. So let's dive into Darttable here and get started. So like I mentioned before, importing of your photos has to be done in the Lighttable module. So make sure you have that view active. And then in the top left here, you're going to find the import panel and clicking on it will expand the panel showing the options for importing. So right now in the latest version of Darttable, which is currently 3.8, there are two default options, add to library and copy and import. And since I have my Nikon D500 connected to my computer, I have a third option. And when I click on mount camera, it provides an option to import from the media card or to use tethered shooting. So let's go over each of these and then you can decide which one you prefer. Now, since we're here, let's go ahead and look at the tethered option first. To activate this feature, you're gonna click on the tethered shoot button and a new interface will open. Now, when I capture an image, it will auto import into Darktable and let's see how that works. I'm gonna go ahead and take a random photo here of my studio and let's see how long it takes to import. So depending on the speed of your computer and your camera's media card will determine how long it takes for that image to import. And that took a few seconds to do. Let's go back to the light table option here. All right, so if you already have your files saved to your hard drive, you can then use add to library to import those images. You can even import directly from your media card when it's attached. Now, unlike when you have your camera attached, it's not going to list the media card from here. Instead, you have to go into add to library and then locate your media card and find the images that way. Now, it's not going to show up automatically in the folder section or even in places. Now, I already have mine added into places, which you can see right here, Nikon D500. And in order to add your media card so it locates it again in the future, you're going to click on the plus icon here and then you're going to navigate to that media card, click open, and then it's going to add it in places. Then when you click on the name here, Nikon D500, in my case, it's going to show all the folders inside of that media card. Now, when I click on Nikon D500 from here, no images show up. So what I have to do now is I have to dig into the folders to find the images. So it might take a couple of minutes to actually find them. It's actually in here. But a quicker way to overcome that is to select the top folder and select recursive directory. And then Darttable will look through all the folders to find all the images. And by default, all images are selected for import. Now, I don't know about you, but the file numbers here have no meaning to me. So I have no idea what this particular image is all about. I don't know what I took. Could it be a tree? Could it be a person? Water? I have no idea. So what I like to do is I like to turn on the thumbnail preview so I can actually see which images are being imported because I may not want to import all of them. I may just want to select a select few. So if we click right here on this little eye icon, it's going to show those thumbnails and you can click it again to hide it. So it's going to take a minute to show all those thumbnail previews, depending on how many images that you have. Now what I can do is I can go in and select individual photos. So if I click on this top photo, only that photo is selected. If I want to select this one as well, I'm going to hold down my command or control key and click that. Then I can scroll through and continue clicking as long as I have command or control selected. Now, if I want to select multiple images within two other images, I can select one and then hold down my shift key and click on the top image here. And then it's going to select all those images in between. Now it's only going to import those images that are selected versus what we had originally. So nine images out of 139 are now selected and that's it. So now all you have to do is click on add to library and they will automatically be imported into Darktable for you. All right, so let's go ahead and close out of that and let's take a look at copy and import. 
actually, let's go back because I want to show you one more thing here in Add to Library. And that is if you go to the places again and click on Home, this is going to list all the folders on your operating system. This way you can select your folder of images that are already installed on your computer. So in this case, I can go to desktop and select this folder and it's then going to show all the images inside of here. So that's how you would import your images if they're already on your hard drive. All right, so copy and import is pretty much the same process. However, this option allows you to rename your files during import. So this would be helpful when importing directly from your media card or when you haven't renamed the files on your hard drive, but you're going to end up with duplicate files since you're copying and importing at the same time. So my recommendation, if your files are already on your computer, is to rename them before importing. And you should be able to do that with the operating system that you have, Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever the case may be. Just do a Google search on how to rename your files before importing. But if you decide you want to use this option, you can rename your files from the option below the list of your files here by clicking on naming rules to set up how they're renamed. Now, the naming pattern consists of three parts a base part for defining the parent folder, a session part defining a subdirectory, and then a file name part defining the file name structure for each imported image. And the file naming structure, I'll admit, it looks a little confusing. So in the next article that's going to follow this tutorial, you're gonna find a link that will provide a list of predefined variables that you can use in each part. So by default, your images are going to be imported into the system pictures folder on your operating system. And it's going to go inside of a subdirectory, or I should say a subfolder called dark table. If you'd like to import your images into a different directory, you can do so by clicking on this folder icon and then choose your preferred folder. Now under that, we have our subdirectory naming pattern and a default subfolder naming system will be applied and your images will go into this subfolder. So you can either change the subfolder naming to something you prefer, or if you don't want your images in another subfolder, you're gonna delete all this information right here. You can also keep the original file name when you turn this option on right here versus the file naming pattern underneath it. Now, for the renaming of your files, you're going to use this option down here. And we have a default setting that will add the year, the month, and the day, which will be today's date, and then the file extension. Now, for my system, I've set up a sequence variable that is going to add a sequential number, so 01, 02, 03, et cetera, to my file name. Now, I need to mention something about this year, month, and day here and in the subdirectory. This date is going to be based on today's date, not the day you took the photo. So if you want to override the date and apply the date that you took the photos, you're going to need to apply that in the override today's date. So these images here were taken on, it looks like February 12th, and today's date is, I believe, February 16th. So if I want to override that, I'm just going to do something random here. So we're going to put our year first, followed by the month, and then the day that the photo was taken. Now this is going to override this information down here, and then it's going to put the sequential number in here next to it with an underscore, and then the file extension. And that's it. You're now ready to import the images. Okay, so one more thing you should know before importing is the parameters you can set during import. So from here, you can include or exclude certain metadata from these options. The one thing I like to include on all images that I import is copyright information. So all of these are pretty self-explanatory. So go ahead and go through these and you are now ready to import your images. So do that and like I mentioned, import all the images from your section three folder so you can follow along with the rest of the tutorials.